Golfers, today I'm gonna to share with you the biggest takeaway hack you'll ever see. This is important because if we start our swing wrong, the rest of the swing becomes all compensation, which means your consistency levels are really poor. So today we're really gonna get you starting the swing correctly through this little hack to make you a very consistent golfer. Stay tuned to find out how. So what we're really talking about today is the takeaway, the start of the swing. And most golfers tend to whip the club inside. And what you'll see is this device I've got in the middle of the shaft is way behind my hand here and the club head's way behind my hand here. And then the common shape moves they'll make from there will tend to be an upright arm swing and then an over the top move or a very short, narrow, weak, powerless backswing. So the guys that move the club more up will tend to create more power but tend to have more misdirection in the shaft and the plane of the swing which causes issues with the path through the golf ball and therefore how the club face reacts to that. So really what we're after today is this takeaway hack to make sure we can get the club starting back in the correct way. And there's two ways I'm gonna share with you today that are gonna to help that. So two great little exercises to make you start the swing correctly to make sure you can become a consistent golfer. So the first way is this little box on the floor. Now this is a lightweight box. You want something that's fairly light, a shoe box, a dozen ball box, something like that. And what we're gonna do is take our setup and place this box so it's basically resting against the club header address. What I'm looking for you to do is basically get the handle to move and the club head not to disturb the box. Eventually, we want then the club head to push the box out of the way so we can hit the ball on the way down. So basically we're looking to start the golf swing with a kind of handle and body move like this and then the club head to follow. Now if I do that, what you'll see here is the club head lags behind the hands and you'll see here I get this kind of move into my takeaway position, the first parallel. And we're looking for this device now to be in line with the hands or if anything, to overdo this exercise to be just outside the hands. We also want to feel that that toe is slightly down, so it's pretty much parallel to my spine. This also helps get the club face in a stronger position, which is something that, again, is one of my big pet hates. When we get the club face too open and rolled inside, that creates a lot of misery on the way down and a lot of yuck shots. We want to hit nice shots. So we want to create this kind of draggy waggle, and that's how we probably take it to the course. I almost feel like the belly button and hands move and then the clubber gets left behind. Now in the ideal world, I'd be quite happy with it moving pretty much in tandem, in sync, maybe even the arms slightly leading and then the body following. But the most common mistake we see, and I see this with golfers all the time on lesson T, is too much rotation in the forearms, too much rotation in the wrists, the club working inside and that face getting open. And this little device pointing too horizontal. So let's go ahead and show you how it works with this device. So again, I'm gonna take my setup, aim down that fairway in front of me, and I'm gonna really feel that I get the handle to beat that box. Now, if I do it as a little rehearsal, I'm gonna to have to keep putting that box back, but that's essentially what I'm looking for it to do. And when I go and hit the ball, I'll have a little bit more force in the club, so it'll move that box a little bit further out of the way. Let's go ahead and hit a ball now, just doing that. From a golf perspective, and from a field perspective, that felt really different to normal. And when we watch it back, we'll see exactly how that looks. But it definitely felt different. And that's what we wanted to do. The ideal process would be that you would do this drill maybe for 10 balls in a row. Get some feels, get some video evidence so you can back up your feels with some trust. And then go ahead and hit a normal shot. Still trying to imagine that box is there and get those hands to beat that box in that takeaway move. And then from there onwards, make the swing feel very natural and see how it reacts and see how it starts to look. I've had so much success with this with my clients who get that takeaway wrong, whether it's because the arms and body sequencing isn't right and they're moving at different rates and I want to improve the rate of the body in relation to the hands and shorten their backswing, or whether I just want to improve that takeaway. Let me just touch on that backswing thing a little bit longer for you. So what I tend to see with some golfers who tend to start the swing with the arms too dominant and then move the body at the top, they get a lot overrun and the swings get very long and loose at the top. In getting the body to work early in that relationship, 
we tend to find that the body and arms finish at the same time. We can get the kind of short, wide look swing that I like at the top, and we see we're most successful tall pros. The second way is really focusing just on this device I've got in the shaft. Now, this is just a bit of plastic with a golf ball stuck on it. It's part of a teaching aid, Total Golf Trainer, that I've just stuck onto the shaft. I like it as a visual. And what we tend to see with this is if I try and get that golf ball, again, lagging behind the hands and pointing down to the ground, it gives me a very similar look and feel to what I was doing with the box. So you could stick a tee on the shaft and do the same thing if you wanted to. And you could even stick a golf ball to a tee and do it that way or anything you might have lying around that you could do this with. But it certainly is just a real visual to get this feel. Again, the waggle, almost get this wrist increasing this extension in this initial move and then the extension goes off. Again, the extension we have at address to the extension we have in this takeaway position wants to be very close to being the same within a degree or two. What I'm trying to feel here is almost that, that degrees of extension would increase say to about five or 10 and then probably go to about the same here. So we're trying to create this little waggle journey. So with the device on, hands first, ball point to the floor. Again, felt very, very similar to using the box, which is the great thing. So if you don't want to take the box to the range with you, I can totally understand why you might not want to do that. You might have people looking at you all strange. Then put the T-peg on here with some tape or some blue tack and feel like you're going to do exactly the same drill. It will certainly help that first move in the golf swing and therefore help you become consistent because there'll be less compensatory movements with your body and arms and wrists in the downswing to make you obviously play better from a bad position.